I, I came to the conclusion people were thinking that time was linear and once a year ended, that year was over. That is not how it works in God's calendar. That, when Jesus got baptized, that wine skin, skin is still going. It's manifesting here at King of Kings. See, time continues on in a cycle, a circle. And we're already, we began this at Feast of Tabernacles 2019, and now we're already into 5784 approaching the year 2024. See, you're almost halfway through this era. Look at somebody and say, Thank God for that. <laughs> and yet, it's an era of manifestation, and I don't think we've hit, I, I can't believe we did the song like we did today. I can't, I don't believe we've hit our manifestation goal yet. I don't believe we've hit the level of manifestation that God has for us. And the year we're just ending is a year of divine recovery. But here's the part where I think we have to gain acceleration it was also a year, see, it's Gamel, and it's a camel, and it's a year of opening up new supply routes. So there's something today that the Lord kept speaking to me all day yesterday that we have to loose in this place to take us to a new manifestation of success. There's something about success and multiplication today that God brought us here for. Because see, now, here's the way you want to think about it. Psalms 23, which we all know that psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He'll even take me and seat me. Uh, he'll take me through death. He'll take me through the shadow of death. He'll seat me with my enemies and that whole psalm is about prosperity. See, we think it's a shepherd psalm, but it's about how will you be led to prosper in the future. And the psalm is actually about moving in the timing that is necessary upon your path. And no matter what you're moving, uh, how you're moving on your path, and no matter what's on your path, he already has goodness and mercy that's going to follow you and be a rear guard for you if you will keep moving. Look at somebody and said, I can't stop now. <laughs> and it, that psalm has a, an embedded Hebrew word in it, chagog. It's about if you'll keep moving through your feast time, your enemies will have to learn to serve you. That's really what that psalm is about. If you'll keep moving with me in your field through the feast times and stay in my timing, your enemies will have to sit you at their table and feed you. And if you'll keep moving, I'll back you up. I'm just paraphrasing that. Uh, from Hebrew to East Texas. Now, now, with that, it brings us up to today. We are now moving on our path of recovery. Moving on our path where new supply is there, and we've now gotten up to the door of promise. Well, that promise door is, you have to remember, God's been waiting on us a long time. He waited on his covenant people 476 years. Now think about that. Now, he knows what he's looking for from us. And he knows 
who is capable of going in there and moving forward. Uh, he knows when there's a group that the war in the promise, they're not capable of taking. That was the first group that came out of Egypt. He looked at him and he said, oh, wait a minute. You ran from the giants. You went back and you set all sorts of confusion in the camp. You postponed my plan for 40 years. When I had those giants prepared to feed you. They were prepared as your food. But your eyesight shifted time. And postponed what I had planned to give you as blessing. Now, that's another way of saying Psalms 23. You're going to have to keep moving. You're going to have to move past your enemies. And then my goodness and mercy are going to follow you. And so, what he had to do... And then there was Moses, who was no leader like him. This is what's scary for us in leadership. No leader like Moses. And what he did was, instead of using the new method of speaking that God told him to, to produce the supply they needed, he used the old method of striking. And the Lord said, well, how am I going to trust you in the promise? You just can come up to the mountain. I'll show you the promise. This sometimes makes me shiver. I'll show you the promise. But you'll just, and, and, and the Lord didn't say he died up there. It said he took him. So some way or another, uh, it's this door of promise is important for us to think through because, see, Moses had a, as meek as he was and, and such an incredible prophet, he had an anger in his emotion he never could deal with, Mary. He never could get it dealt with. And that anger in his emotion kept him from going through. Because he got mad at the people, and he said, you know, they are getting on my last nerve. And I, what he really did when he struck the rock to give them water was he struck them. Where all he had to turn around and do that the Lord told him to do and say, shh, and then rock, give it up for him. He didn't have to like those people. That's a, that's a word for leaders. You don't have to like them. You just have to provide what they need. 